this morning I am making the most of what I think might be the last of the beautiful days before the second bank holiday in May. Today I have two sets of errands. One is I have I think three requests on find a grave from my local cemetery but also today I am foraging and I'm foraging for a flower because I am going to make elderflower champagne today and I've been doing this for a few years now it's really fun it's simple it's cheap to make and it tastes really nice So there are several spots around where I live where I know there are elderflower bushes and a couple of weeks ago when I was out I could see that the buds were already forming and normally I wouldn't pick these until June. It's the 21st of May today, so this feels quite early in the year, but we have a lot of really warm weather, and I think that sparks them into action. So I've picked one flower head that I found on my route in. I'm now going to the cemetery because I know there's at least one plant which produced quite a lot last year. But I try to pick a few flower heads from different places so that I'm not stripping any one plant. That said, you don't need to pick many to make enough elderflower champagne. So, I'm going to go to the cemetery now to do the finder graves and then I'm going to have a look and see what flowers I can get. There's another bush that I use and I could see that from the road as I walk down and that's got loads on it. So if I don't get any from this one, it won't matter. <laughs> because I know that there is another bush. But it's nice to get a, a selection of different plants and not to take too many flowers from each one because in the autumn, well not even in the autumn, but when they produce their berries, A, you can also pick and eat the berries, you have to cook them, but elderberry, and a blackberry pie is a nice thing to have. So if you strip off flowers, you don't get any berries at all. But also, nature wants the berries. Um, the birds is a valuable source of food for them as the year progresses. So right, I'm here in the cemetery. I'm gonna go and do my numbers of my grave numbers and then I should show you what I find. So here is one of the bushes that I used last year. Very small flowers and most of them haven't come out yet. So I think I'm gonna leave this one. And I think I'm going to once I see another one, I think I'm just going to go back to the other bush I saw on the way home, which had a lot more flowers on it. And I think... Um, it's not going to cause any problems. There's another bush here. One huge flower. I can't get to it because it's surrounded by brambles. It's not worth the effort. So I'm going to head back now and go back to the other bush that I saw, which I did show briefly on another video the other day actually. But 
uh, the warm weather has really pushed it into action. So let's head back there now and see what we can get. So here's the other bush that I found. Plenty of flowers for what I need. So I'm going to snip a few off and I can get home and start making. Okay, so I'm back. And I'm going to get on with this elderflower recipe. So I'm just looking up the recipe that I regularly use. Um, I've got my flowers, which I'll show you what I'm going to do with in a minute. I also need, what do I need to do first? I need 12 cups of filtered or unchlorinated cold water. Well, I don't have that. So what I'm going to do is boil the water and then use that. I'm going to boil the water and then let that cool down. So let's do this first. How many cups are in there? How many cups do I need? I need 12 cups of cold. So let's start with... That's three and a half. Everything. Seven. saucepan and we'll boil them both up together to save time. Right, so whilst that is boiling and then cooling I'm going to prep my flowers. So I'm going to move you down junk out the way. Flowers are really easy to prep. So, one bowl. Get the flowers out. you need is a fork and with your flowers nice the bits you just Use the fork to pull the flowers off the stems, like that. And it works pretty well.
uh, with these flowers you don't rinse them because all the yeast that you need to ferment this is in the pollen it's in those flower heads so you, you just um, shake off the bugs if there are any oh I can smell that it smells amazing Whew, if you've got hay fever you'll hate this So there's my flowers. Let's tidy up as we go. So there we are. That's seven or eight flower heads. Oh, they smell amazing. So what I now need to do is get four cups of boiling water. So we're going to boil this separately. And I now need to measure out Let's have a look, what have we got here? One and a half pounds of granulated sugar. So we bought the sugar and I still have some over. Sugar needs to go into there. So I'm pouring it in to my jug. I'm just going to wait for my water to boil. Okay, so now I need to dissolve all my sugar with four cups of boiling water, which I'm going to do here in this jug. Now what I need to do is get everything into the place where I'm going to ferment it. So I've got a demijohn. My dad had a bunch of these at the back of the loft. So I use that. So what I'm going to do first is get a bit of cold water into this because I don't want to crack it. 
a little bit of extra water just to take the edge off. And then hopefully, if I then use some of the cold water, cold air water from here, that's better. Get that in there. this in. Let's get the rest of this cold water in that's boiled. be a lot. <laughs> Forgotten how much there was. Now what I need to do is add the lemon juice. Now I don't have actual lemons. I use bottled juice. It needs to be two large lemons and the rind. Well I don't have either because I don't have any lemons. So they reckon that two large lemons and the rind equals about half a cup of lemon juice. So I'm going to put, let's make half a cup of lemon juice. Just there. There it goes. And the other thing you can add um, which I often do because I find that fermentation doesn't really kick off is just to add a pinch or a little bit of um, dry baking yeast so I just put a little just a bit in there just to help things along and now The only thing I have to do is add the flowers and then give it a good old mix up. So I'm just going to do this by hand and just stuff them in so to speak. Which is going to be fiddly but it does work. You just have to bear with it. most of that and then you can see it all sitting at the top there so I am just going to put my hand across the top and give it a good shake first stage of elderflower champagne. Um, now what I need to do is cover this it says cover with a clean 
towel and then leave it at room temperature for 48 hours stirring at least twice a day so in my case giving it a good shake twice a day so that's that stage and then we'll come back to it in two days and see how it looks you should start to see bubbles start to develop as it starts to ferment um, it sometimes happens but doesn't always so I'm just going to keep an eye on it the colour looks really nice these are really early flowers so this looks pretty good but hopefully as the uh, as the flowers soak they'll start to drop down a bit so that's the first stage of making elderflower champagne so we'll come back in two days so I'm going to put this somewhere safe and then we'll come back in two days and see what we've got Right, today I am finishing off my elderflower champagne. It hasn't throffed, mine never ever does. But it doesn't seem to make an enormous discipline, uh, difference. I just don't get quite as fizzy a recipe at the end. So what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to move you down so you can see what I'm actually doing. So here is that demijohn and I have a clean new demijohn here to decant the mixture into ready for fermenting or for the final stage of fermenting. So what I've got is a little funnel, I've got some fabric here which will go in like so and then I'm just going to pour this into the new bottle. trying to tip over. Now you might wonder how I'm going to get all the flowers out of here. Well, because they're only small flowers, they tend to come out anyway. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. And then you just have to let it do its thing. It's a lovely clear colour though, which is really nice, and it smells amazing. I love the smell of elderflower champagne. And what I found is if it's not fizzy enough, um, you can dilute it down a bit. So you can put like a half and half with lemonade or tonic water, depending on your taste. Sometimes I find it a bit sweet. Um, I tend not to drink a lot of sweet drinks, so I find mixing it with a tonic water is actually really nice. So you can do that as well. And there we have it. It's done. Decanted. Ready for the next stage. Look at that beautiful colour. Right. Now, what you need to do here is it, you need to let it sit at room temperature for another week. If you're bottling it, you need to burp the bottles regularly because as it fizzes, the pressure will build up. I'm using the Demijohn and I have one of these which does the release for me. So we're going to pop that in. And 
and then that will deal with the pressure problem for me. So I'm going to put this back where it was before, leave this for a week, then I'm going to decant it into its final bottles and then pop it in the fridge for the second week, continue to burp the bottles every two or three days, it'll have settled down by then and then it's ready to drink. So that's it. It's just a nice little addition to the kitchen, it's fun to make. This is definitely one of those slow projects, you can't rush it, everything happens as it happens and I really like that because everything is so now, 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 you've got to have it tomorrow, you've got to have it yesterday and when you make things like this, it's like making bread by hand, everything happens at the rate it's supposed to, everything is slowly done, it's handmade, this is why handmade costs money, because it's the time that it takes. So I'm going to put this aside and then we'll see how it looks. So I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you found it useful. It's an easy thing to make. I don't think it's that expensive, um, but I tend to keep a lot of the ingredients in stock anyway. The Demijohns, you don't have to use those. I use them because my dad happened to have them. They've been up in the loft for easily 20 years and been forgotten about. So I have enjoyed putting those to use because I remember dad making beer and wine in these when I was a kid. And it's quite nice to see them getting some use now. So I'm just going to rinse through the old bottle and then we're done. So any questions, let me know. And... Uh, Happy elderflower season.